Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about doing WH movement inside of an embedded clause, because it's slightly different than doing it in a matrix clause. We're going to do a derivation to run through this. So let's start off with the sentence we're going to, we're going to drive. It's going to be Calvin wondered um, what Alicia baked is the uh, surface form, but we're going to generate the D structure first. Uh, just as we have in, uh, in previous um, videos where we do derivations. Um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our arguments are correctly placed in their theta positions. That's the positions where they get their theta rules. So we actually have uh, two sets of verbs here. One is this higher verb wonder, and the other is the lower verb bake. And we have to check all of our constraints for both of those things. So um, in the higher verb wonder, the verb wonder takes a CP as its complement, and it takes a CP um, that, is a, um, that is not a question. Now the reason why we're going to make this minus Q here, which is, may appear counterintuitive, is we're not going to have subject ox inversion. Because in embedded contexts in English, you don't get subject ox inversion. Now, if you're in a language that has an overt question complementizer, this might be actually be plus Q rather than minus Q. But in any case, um, this embedded CP has the feature plus WH. And that plus WH refers to the fact that we're going to do um, WH movement inside of this embedded clause this question word, what, is going to end up in the specifier of the CP because we're going to have Calvin wondered what Alicia Blake, uh, baked. Um, the other thing we have is on the upstairs clause, we have an active verb phrase which requires an agent DP, which is right here. And downstairs we have the same thing. We have an active um, voice phrase that requires a DP. This is the agent of bake. Bake requires a theme. So here's our theme down here in its usual position. So uh, Calvin gets its agent role in that voice P. Um, the uh, wonder requires a plus WH, which is going to be critical for us to do the WH movement. Um, so the CP of wonder gets assigned to this, the proposition role, if you like, gets assigned to this uh, position. Um, the uh, Alicia gets its theta role in the specifier of the voice phrase, and what gets its internal theme theta role as the complement to the verb. All right, so we, what we've, we've got our, our uh, constraints here. We've met the theta criterion. Um, there is no plus Q in this sentence. Uh, so there's a minus Q here, and there's a minus Q here. If this was, um, if this was another language, this one down here might be plus Q. All right, um, let's talk about case. Uh, so downstairs, right, um, this DP is in a case position. It's the complement to the V, and that's precisely what you expect, um, that it's going to be licensed here. That's also its theta position. But Alicia is not in the, its case position. Um, the specifier of voice phrase is not a case position in English. Um, the specifier of TP is the case position for nominative case. So uh, this element here is going to have to move to the specifier of this TP in order to get case. We're going to see exactly the same things upstairs. So Calvin is not in a case position, um, but there is a case position, which is the specifier of the finite matrix or main clause um, TP. Now, once we do those two little movements, we've met the case filter. 
Um, these two movements also help us meet the um, EPP because the DP is in the specifier of uh, the TP which is required by the extended projection principle. So the EPP is also met. The last feature we have to deal with has to deal with this plus WH. Now up here, critically, this one is minus WH. So nothing is going to move into this position in this particular sentence. Now in other sentences, later that we're going to look at, this will be plus WH2, and the element will move into this position. But here we're just looking at a sentence where the WH movement is embedded and embedded only. So we're concerned with this WH element. Now, um, we have a number of things that could potentially move into this position, but critically, this what is the only one that meets the conditions of uh, the plus WH. It's a WH element, and it moves into that position to check off that WH feature and meets all the right conditions. This gives us um, a well-formed surface structure uh, Calvin wondered what Alicia baked.